Praise the Lord. I welcome you to Miracle Ground. This is Thursday, Revival, Miracle, Hour for me. I said it's for me. I believe. Or are you? I believe. Something must happen today. A miracle must come down upon you today. That mountain will move away. God is going to put joy and laughter in your mouth. Are you ready for the anointing that breaks the yoke? Where are you? Father, in Jesus' name, we bless your name today. We exalt the name of Christ. We know that what you all think are possible. And I'm asking, Lord, you come to everyone in a special way today. Move every mountain. Destroy the works of the devil. Set your people free. Let the anointing flow to every life tonight. And let the power of faith work in every life tonight. In Jesus' name. You will answer the prayer of everyone. You will put testimony in every mouth. And your people will go back home with loads of blessings in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the miracle recipients say, We're coming to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 22. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, For truly I say unto you, For assuredly I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, no doubter there today. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have, you will have, I will have, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. As we look at verse 22, here are the words of Jesus. And you know Jesus Christ the same, yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus is still saying the same thing today. In fact, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. There's a fulfillment in your life tonight. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Tonight, you are here. I don't want to say we. I single you out. You are the one tonight God is looking for. You are the one tonight. Heaven is going to be opened unto you. And you are going to receive in Jesus' name. You are here tonight for full liberation. What are you here for? I said you are here tonight for full liberation. And tonight I'm talking to you on full liberation through faith in Christ. Full liberation through faith in Christ. It says have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Because faith in God is the solution to every problem. God, the living God, is the unchanging God. Is the eternal God. Is the mighty God. Is the infinite God, the powerful God, irresistible God, the independent God. God is independent of every problem. He stands back, he looks at your mountain, and he commands, go, what will happen? It will go. 
is the immutable God. That means it doesn't change. He can do all things. And he will do all things even in your life tonight in Jesus' name. He promised to do with him all things are possible. Look at that verse 22 again. Jesus answering says unto them, tell me out aloud, have faith in God. Why? Because God is the creator. Have faith in God. Why? Because God is the fountain of life. Have faith in God. Why? Because God depends on nothing. And everything depends on him. He made the whole world without any instrument. Without any material thing. Out of nothing. Out of emptiness. He created the whole universe. And between you and him tonight, there is no wall of demarcation. Between you and him tonight, there is no wall of hindrance. It's going to create. It's going to work. It's going to perform. I thought somebody there will say, Amen. All things depend on him. He is immortal. He is incorruptible. In his essence, we're talking about God, the Almighty. We're talking about God, the all-powerful. We're talking about God, the supreme one. We're talking about God, the one that lives and loves and the one that's able to turn every stone out of your life and every curse is broken tonight in Jesus' name. He is loving. He is merciful. He is compassionate. And that's why Jesus Christ said, what load do you carry? What problem do you have? What mountain confronts you? And he says, the solution to your problem is tonight, have faith in God. Have faith in God. This mountain will move. Have faith in God. The sickness will go. Have faith in God. This challenge will be resolved in your life in Jesus' name. Have faith in God. He is omnipotent. Have faith in God is omnipresent. Have faith in God is omniscient. Therefore, as you have faith in God tonight, you understand, problems are solved tonight. I said problems are solved tonight. And that yoke is broken tonight in Jesus' name. And look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 17 there. Romans chapter 10. And I'm looking at verse 17. Look at this. It says in verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing. Somebody said, I don't have faith. That's my problem. What you are hearing tonight will bring enough faith in your heart. You receive your miracle. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing by the word of God. The faith for your salvation, it comes. The faith for your healing, it comes. The faith for your deliverance, it comes. The faith for signs and wonders, it's here tonight. And the faith for your miracle, it comes tonight. Because faith cometh by hearing. Faith came in the past. To all those people who have read about in the Bible, faith came to them because of what they heard from the Lord. The people at the time of Jesus, the people that lived in the time of Jesus, they came, blind eyes were open. It will happen. The lame rose up and they walked. It will happen. All their challenges were rolled away. It will happen again. How did they receive? By faith. How did they have faith? Faith came to them by hearing. And today, how does faith come? I said today, how does faith come? What you hear tonight brings dynamic faith in your life. Mountain moving faith in your life. Thank God, thank God, I see a miracle coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If I were to tell you just one thing tonight, so that your life today, this week, this month, this year, so that your life for the rest of your existence on earth will be brighter than anybody ever thought about. 
What is the one thing? I will tell you. Let me show you in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading here from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, whereby ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That verse sets you free. Okay, let me say it for myself. That verse sets me free. If I were to tell you just one thing, you have a challenge before you. You have a project before you. You have a sickness confronting you. And you have a problem confronting your family. And you have tears flowing in the eyes of somebody there. And there's sorrow in your heart. And there's oppression. And there's difficulty. If I were to tell you one thing, just one thing, that will bring total solution and total redemption, and total restoration to your life, what's the just one thing I'll tell you? If I were to tell you one thing when you're at a crossroad, if I were to tell you just one thing when it appears that everything is down, there's no water, there is no oil, and there is no joy, and there is no happiness, and there is no friend, and there is no helper. And yet you are saying, I don't want to end up my life like this. I want things to turn around. If I were to tell you just one thing, that if you do that one thing, solution will come. You have been fainting in your life. You have been failing in your life. You have been having insurmountable problems in your life. And you say, tell me just one thing. What's the one thing I can tell you? So that all those problems will be solved. As you come here tonight and you are saying, hey, I came here for Thursday Miracle Revival Hour. What's the one thing you are going to take back home that you will know? Every place your foot shall tread upon, the Lord will give it to you. Every door, every door you knock, that door will be open. Everything you're asking the Lord and you say, I want this, I want this, that thing will be done. What's the one thing I can tell you? Look at verse 16, above all. Somebody help me, above all. Take it. Take it. It's there. Take it. Take it. You will take it tonight. Take the shield of faith. What's a shield? A shield, have you seen, uh, you know, those uh, officers, uh, somebody is throwing something and they put up the shield like that, that thing they throw will never get to you anymore. They throw an arrow from the other side, it will never get to you. They throw an arrow from the path of darkness, it will never get to you. They throw an arrow from the conspiracy of your enemies, it will never get to you. Above all, above all, above all, taking, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able. Ye shall be able. I'm able. I am able. I said I am able. Look at the Red Sea, I'm able to cross that sea. Look at that mountain. I'm able to bring water out of that mountain. Look at Goliath. I'm able to conquer Goliath. Look at the sickness. I'm able to get freedom from the sickness. Able, able, able. Somebody there is able tonight. Somebody there is able tonight. You will conquer your fear. You will conquer your problem. It says above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. How many fiery darts? How many fiery darts? Look up here, look up here. Maybe you've never got 100% before. You took that exam. Okay, okay, you got 63. You took that exam. You got a 67. Every prayer you prayed now, 100% answer. Every request you make now, 100% answer. Every word of authority you speak now, 100% answer. Because you will quench how many deaths of the wicked? I said you will quench how many deaths of the wicked? All the, all the fiery darts of the wicked tonight. We're looking at this together. Full libration. Full libration through faith in Christ. Full libration through faith in Christ. 
There are three things we're looking at before we pray. The prayer tonight is going to be prayer. I said the prayer tonight is going to be prayer. You pray. I pray. And if two of us shall agree together as touching anything you are asking tonight, it is done. Number one. Number one, the faithfulness and the faultlessness of God. The faithfulness and the faultlessness of God. He has no fault. He makes no mistake. He doesn't lie. He doesn't deceive. He is faithful. The faithfulness and the faultlessness of God. Number two, the fellowship and the forgiveness from God. The fellowship and the forgiveness from God. Number three, the freedom. Somebody there tonight is free. I said somebody there tonight is free. The freedom through faith in God. The freedom through faith in God. Tell me number one in your life there. I said number one, not on paper. Number one in your life. The faithfulness and the faultlessness of God. We're coming back. We're coming back to Mark. I'm reading from chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 22. Mark chapter 11 verse 22. Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. The question is why? Why are you to have faith in God? Why should anybody have faith in God? What reason can we give? That somebody has to put his faith in God. Because of the faithfulness of God. Because of the faultlessness of God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I'm reading to you from verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse 9. It says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God. You see that? He is God. The faithful God. Because he cannot lie. He cannot deceive. He cannot turn around and say no when he has said yes. Because of the faithfulness of God. Which keepeth covenant and mercy. With them that love him. And keep his commandments to a thousand generations. A thousand generations. What does that mean? That, what that means is that if you take a generation for 40 years, a thousand generations will be 40,000 years. And since he made that promise, it's not 40,000 years yet. And it's not up to 1,000 generations yet. And he said, every generation, every generation, every generation, God is faithful tonight. Or are you? He's faithful to you. And you'll find in his faithfulness is going to do something unforgettable in your life. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to those judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is where unto thy fathers everything he has said. Everything he has proclaimed, everything he has promised, everything he has prophesied, everything he has pronounced concerning you, reaching concerning you, there is a fulfillment tonight. I said there is a fulfillment tonight. Look at verse 15. The Lord thy God, the Lord thy God will take away from thee, from me. I said from me. The Lord will take away from thee all sickness. How many sicknesses will he take away tonight? I will put none of these diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. That amen is dwindling. Look at Psalm 119, Psalm 119. Our God is faithful. My God is faithful. He has said it, he will do it. He has promised it, he'll perform it. Look at this, look at this. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 89. 
Psalm 119 verse 89, forever, O Lord, is thy word settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, is thy promise settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, is your pronouncement settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, is the decree settled in heaven. Look at verse 90. Thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Beyond 40, beyond 50, beyond 100 generations, it says beyond 1,000 generations, beyond 2,000 generations, it says you are faithful and your faithfulness is unto all generations. To this generation in which we are, God will be faithful. To your own generation, God will be faithful. To your family, God will be faithful. And it will work in your life in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 5, the faithfulness of God. First Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm reading here from verse 24. First Thessalonians 5, reading from verse 24, faithfully see that calleth you who also will do it. Faithfully see that saved you who also will do it. Faithfully see that promised you. Who also will do it faithfully see that affirms his word. Who also will do it. Something is happening tonight. Heaven is recording your name tonight. And heaven is attaching a miracle to your name tonight. Healing to your name tonight. Power to your name tonight. Anointing that breaks the yoke to your name tonight. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter. Having therefore, brethren, confidence to enter. Having therefore, brethren, Faith to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And I've been an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance. Full assurance. What kind of assurance do you have tonight? Do you have assurance he'll answer your prayer tonight? He'll break the yoke tonight? He will lift you up tonight? Do you have assurance he's going to promote you tonight? Do you have assurance he's going to answer your prayer tonight? What kind of assurance do you have? Partial assurance? Wavering assurance? Doubtful assurance? A so-so, it may be assurance. What kind of assurance do you have tonight? I said, what assurance do you have tonight? Full assurance, full assurance. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in your heart. Full assurance tonight, a blessing has come. Let us draw near with a true heart. In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Look at Numbers, Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. And I'm reading here from verse 19. Numbers chapter 23. We're reading from verse 19. God is not a man that he shall lie. His promises will not deceive us. His power will work on your behalf. Because God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he said, and shall he not do it? He will do it. As he spoke in, and shall he not make it good? I say, shall he not make it good? It will make it good in your life tonight in Jesus' name. You remember? It says, I am God, I change not. I am God, I change not. He is faithful. He is faultless. 
What's the result of that? What's your response to that? Trust him. He cannot fail. Love him. He cannot fail. Believe him. You will not be disappointed tonight. Obey him. A miracle will come your way. Please him. Honor him. Exalt him. Have faith in God. Have faith in God because he's faithful. Have faith in God because he's faultless. Have faith in God because he's perfect. Have faith in God because he's able. Have faith in God because he's willing. Have faith in God because he's dependable. Have faith in God because he's trustworthy. Have faith in God because he's unchanging. Have faith in God because he's unwavering. Have faith in God because he's unlimited. Have faith in God because he is impartial. Have faith in God because he is above all, he is beyond all. Your problems are solved. Trust him. Believe him. Rely on him. Pharaoh could not stop him. No Pharaoh will stop you. The Red Sea could not halt him. Nothing will halt your progress. Balak, Balaam could not hinder him. No evil doer, no occultic man, no spiritist will be able to hinder you in Jesus' name. You in God, God and you, you are the majority. I see you conquering. I said, I see you conquering. You remember Jericho walls standing between Israel and their inheritance. Jericho walls could not obstruct him. Nothing will obstruct your progress. The Canaanites could not block him. The Canaanites, in their conspiracy together, in their confederacy, they said, Israelites are coming, Israelites are coming, let's unite together, we're going to block them. They will not enter. I see you entering into your promised land. Whatever their conspiracy, they could not stop them at that time. Nobody will stop you at this time. Goliath. And the Philistines could not prevent him. Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon could not overcome him. He is God and he's on your side. He is God and he's your father. He is God and he's your deliverer. Thank God you are delivered tonight. Thank God the Lord sets you free tonight. I am free. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now. Point number two now. The fellowship and the forgiveness from God. If anything hinders prayer at all, if anything hinders miracle at all, it is the lack of fellowship and the lack of forgiveness. You see the people that are far away from God and God is saying, I want to bless you. Draw near. Dress near. And as you draw near and dress near, if you've done anything you shouldn't have done, you say, Lord, I'm sorry. And you turn away from that and you repent from that, forgiveness will come. I said forgiveness will come. But coming back to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. We're reading from verse 22. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you. Who is he talking to tonight? Verily I say unto you. I said, who is he talking to tonight? He's talking to you. And what he says to you will be accomplished in Jesus' name. That whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. But shall believe. But shall believe. Somebody there, I believe tonight. I believe my God tonight. 
I believe his word tonight. I believe his prophecy tonight. I believe my Jesus, my Savior tonight. I believe his word, heaven and earth may pass away, but his word will not pass away in your life, in my life, in our church, even today in Jesus' name. But shall believe, shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have. He shall miss. I said he shall miss. He shall be denied. He will lose. He will not get. I said he will not get. He will. He will. I will. You will. We shall. He says he shall have whatsoever he says. Do you have anything to say tonight? I said, do you have anything to say tonight? I said, do you have anything to say tonight? You want to talk to that mountain. You want to talk to that problem. You want to talk to that challenge. You want to talk to that difficulty. You want to talk to that sin, that barrier between you and the Almighty God. And Jesus said, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them tell me tell me and ye shall have them look at verse 25 and when ye stand pray give me the word tell me out aloud tell me what he wants you to do forgive forgive your wife forgive your husband forgive that brother forgive that sister don't allow unforgiving spirit, bitterness in your soul, bitterness in your heart, to hinder the great miracle that God wants to do and perform in your life tonight. You know, unforgiveness hinders fellowship. Fellowship with God and fellowship with your fellow brother. It says, when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, if you have ought against any, Look at that word, ought, ought, ought. If you have, tell me. I can't hear my people. If you have ought against any, put an N before that ought. What does that become? Not, not. That means if you have something next to nothing, next to nothing, a little thing, well, it's a little thing, but you are angry. It's a little sin, but you are bitter. It's a little sin, but you are avoiding him. It's a little sin, but you are avoiding her. It's a little sin, but you are fighting. It's a little sin, but you are throwing stone. It's a little sin, but you are slandering. It's a little sin, but you are not friendly. It says, if you have ought something next to nothing, Something next to nothing. A little thing, a small thing, an ought against him. It says, for you to have the mountain removed tonight, there must be fellowship, there must be forgiveness. It says, if you have ought against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive you are bitter, you are praying. If you do not forgive, you have hatred and you are praying. If you do not forgive, you are slandering and you are praying. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. What the Lord is saying is, without forgiveness, that is, you first of all receiving forgiveness from God. There is no fellowship. Fellowship with God. Without forgiveness, you forgiving your brother, forgiving your sister, your wife, your husband, your parents, your children, your teacher, and uh, your leaders. Without forgiveness, there's no fellowship. And if there is no fellowship, how do you have the miracle power of God flowing into your life? The river of liberation is flowing tonight. I said the river of uh, liberation is flowing tonight. It will flow to your side. It will flow to your house. It will float your profession. It will float your family. 
But don't let it, don't let that river be damned. Don't let it be stopped. Don't let the flow stop because of unforgiveness. Lord, I forgive other people. Ah, Lord, I forgive all the people. And then you come into fellowship with God because if there is no true fellowship, there can be no active faith. God cannot maintain real fellowship with the wicked. You see now, we're coming to fellowship with God. When you are friendly with God, like Abraham. When you are in fellowship with God, like the disciples to Jesus, that fellowship will just make your faith active. Make your faith powerful. But without that fellowship, your faith will be dormant. Your faith will be dead. Your faith will be inactive. Your faith will not work. But you understand, there can be no real fellowship with the wicked, or the sinner, or the profligate prodigal who has gone to the far country. There can be no fellowship with the treacherous. Remember Absalom? Treacherous, treacherous Absalom. There could be no fellowship between him and David's father when he was in that kind of rebellion. There's no fellowship with the rebel, no fellowship with the slanderer who is destroying his neighbor. There is no fellowship with the disobedient who tramples on the word of God. Look at Psalm 94. Psalm 94, I'm reading from verse 20. Psalm 94, I'm reading from verse 20. Psalm, what's the psalm here now? I said, what psalm are you looking for? What verse are you reading there? Verse 20, it says, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? You see the people that plan mischief against their neighbor, against their friends, Against the against the the, the, the co tenant, against the co worker, they plan mischief behind the door, and then they come. They say, "Oh God, oh God, hear us! We are praying." God says, "No, forgive, forgive, because he cannot have fellowship with those that frame mischief." Therefore, as you come and you call upon the Lord and you turn away from your sin, turn away from your evil, God will forgive. God will cleanse. God will change. Change your life. Change your thoughts. Change everything concerning you. Better days will come. Those better days are starting tonight. When are the better days standing in your life? Tonight, tonight, tonight. Better days in Jesus' name. Hey, look at Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. If my people are the people of God here tonight, I said that the people of God there tonight, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, tell me, and turn, tell me, and turn, tell me out aloud, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Answers to prayer tonight. Miracles for our prayer tonight. And all those sicknesses going away tonight in Jesus' name. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land and heal their land and heal their land in Proverbs chapter 28 reading from verse 13 Proverbs chapter 28 I'm reading from verse 13 it says in verse 13 he that covereth the seas shall not prosper I didn't hear amen now are you covering up? I said, are you covering up? No. You come to God and you expose it to the Lord. And the Lord will bring forgiveness. And he'll bring freedom. And he'll bring mercy on you. 
and he will throw the blanket of love on you in Jesus name he that covereth his sin shall not prosper but whoso confesses and retaineth them whoso confesses and continues in them whoso confesses whoso confesses and does what and forsakes them shall have mercy what's he saying he's saying repent what's he saying he's saying surrender your arms against the almighty the arms you carry the ammunition you carry with which you are fighting the almighty god surrender ask for forgiveness believe in his mercy abide in his love and then after that, after he has forgiven you, continue in obedience. Remain in family fellowship. Remain in family fellowship. You know, there are some people, they think, they'll stay outside there, outside the family. And then anytime they have any challenge, they have any sickness, they have any problem, they'll come as a stranger from outside. And they will come and collect blessing. Then they will go outside again. Your joy will be limited. Your victory will be limited. But you come in and you remain in family fellowship. Not a stranger seeking crumbs of blessing from outside under the table. But you are inside and every day will be a day of blessing. Every day, a day of miracle. Since it's going to happen every day, today. Somebody say, today. My day of miracle. Fellowship and forgiveness from God. Point number three now. The freedom. I'm free today. Freedom. I'm liberated today. Freedom. I'm delivered today. Freedom, my yokes are broken today. Freedom, the sickness is healed tonight. Freedom, liberty tonight for my brother, for my sister there. Where are you there? Where are you there? It's coming your way in Jesus' name. The freedom through faith in God. The freedom through faith in God. What kind of faith are we talking about? Number one, Saving faith, saving faith. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 8. It tells us here, For by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through what? Through what? Through faith. And it says, and that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Salvation. That's what brings you eternal life. Salvation. That's what reconciles you with God. Salvation. That's what enters your name into the book of life. And it says, by faith. By faith you are saved. By grace are you saved through faith. Number one, saving faith. Number two, steadfast faith. Set fast faith. The faith that will not give up. That's the kind of faith the Lord Jesus was talking about. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. This mountain before you tonight will move away in Jesus' name. Steadfast faith. I'm looking at Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. I'm reading to you from verse 46. Mark chapter 10 verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And as they went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. That life of begging will stop tonight. That life of poverty will stop tonight. And that predicament that makes you stay there, depending on other people, will stop tonight in Jesus' name. And when he heard, when he heard, verse 47, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, somebody there, Jesus, 
thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, tell me, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And he called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment, you don't need that thing anymore. Rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? That same question is coming to you tonight. What do you want him to do for you tonight? He will do it. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Go thy way. Go thy way. You are not going back as you came. Go thy way. You are not going back with the blindness. Go thy way. You are not going back with the sickness. Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. What kind of faith did the man have? Steadfast faith. He cried out. Son of David, have mercy on me. They told him, shut up. They told him, keep quiet. They told him, that's enough. He shouted the more, a great deal, steadfast faith. Steadfast faith, I will not be denied. I will not be denied. I will not be denied. This mountain must move. I will not go back home with this problem. This challenge must be resolved. I will not go back the same way. He shouted. He cried out aloud. He will, nobody will stop me. Nobody will stop you. And so Jesus said, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. And immediately you receive the sight and follow Jesus in the way. Number one, saving faith, he will save you tonight. Number two, steadfast faith, he will remove that blindness tonight in Jesus' name. Number three, silent faith. Silent faith. We've seen the man that shouted. This one now is not shouting. It's quiet. Silent. Not saying anything to anybody. Only quietly telling herself. Look at Mark chapter 5. Silent faith. Even silent faith is going to do something tonight. Quiet faith is going to do something tonight. Give me a good, good amen over there. Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 25, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood, how many years? 12 years, 12 years problem solved tonight, 20 years problem solved tonight, 30 years problem solved tonight, who had suffered many things of many physicians, and at spent all that she had, and was nothing better. And then it says, but rather grow was, when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garments. You'll touch Jesus tonight. That blood will dry up. That cancer will dry up. That tuberculosis will vanish away. HIV will be healed tonight in Jesus' name. For she said to herself, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. I shall be whole. I'm waiting for my people. I shall be whole. Verse 29, and straightway, somebody shout straightway. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. Dried up. Dried up. Dried up. That thing that is oozing at that pause, dry up. That thing that is walking about in the body, dry up. That thing that is knocking your head, dry up. That thing that is pulling you and they want to pull you into destruction and death, dry up. 
and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Verse 34, and he said unto her, daughter, 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 any daughter there tonight? Any daughter there tonight? Daughter, thy face has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Silent faith. Strong faith. Look at Romans. Romans chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 17. This is strong faith. Strong faith. Strong faith. Look at this in verse 17. Romans chapter 4. As it is written. I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed. Even God, who quickness the dead and call it those things which be not as though they were. Strong faith, strong faith. Call in those things which be not as though they were. He had no child, but now his name has been changed to Abraham, the father of many nations. And your name is changed tonight. And your nature is changed tonight. And your perspective is changed tonight. And your destiny is changed tonight. And that negative thing is changed tonight in Jesus' name. Which colored doses would be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken. So shall thy seed be. Verse 19, verse 19, verse 19. And be not weak in faith. Be not weak in faith. Somebody there, be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was. Strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded tonight. I'm fully persuaded tonight that your problems are solved. I'm fully persuaded tonight that that mountain is moving away. I'm fully persuaded tonight that incurable disease is going to be healed tonight. I wanted an amen coming from there. I'm fully persuaded tonight that all those mountains are removed and they are gone in Jesus' name. Be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Perform. He will do it tonight. Number five, sonship faith. Sonship faith. You come into the family. You are now a child of God. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, and you, the believing Son of God. Jesus, the exalted Son of God, and you, you are the redeemed Son of God. You are changed. You come into the family of God, and you have sonship faith. Sonship faith. I'm looking at Galatians. Galatians. I'm reading here from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, a life of victory. And the life which I now live, a life of joy. The life which I now live, a life of dominion. The life which I now live, a life of prosperity. Say your own amen for yourself. And the life which I now live, a life of happiness. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Sonship faith. Sonship faith. Sonship faith. Number one, saving faith. Number two, tell me, steadfast faith. Number three, silent faith. Number four, strong faith. Number five, sonship faith. Singing faith, singing faith. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 25. 
when there's a problem, instead of crying, you have faith in your heart, singing faith in your heart. You sing, you sing, you go from one song to the other, song to the other, that chorus and that chorus, that chorus. As you sing, miracle will happen. I said that you see, miracle will happen. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas preached. And what did they do? And tell me out aloud, sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, somebody shout suddenly. Somebody hold us suddenly. Scream suddenly. That's how your mountain will go tonight. That's how your sickness will go tonight. That's how the infirmity will go tonight. And suddenly, and suddenly, suddenly, there's a great earthquake. Everything shakeable will be shaking out of your life. All those torments of the devil and all the stalks and all the chains, all the fetters of the enemy in your life tonight, suddenly there is a shaking from heaven. It says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking, and immediately, and immediately, and immediately, all the doors, how many doors? How many doors? Doors are going to open before you. That door that is keeping you, keeping you restrained and keeping you intimidated and keeping you in a corner. You are going to stretch your wings. You are going to fly. You are going to soar in Jesus' name. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands loosed. Everyone bands over there loosed. I said, everyone's bands over here loosed. Ah, look at them in my front. All your chains are broken tonight. Everyone's bands loose. How about you? Every band loose in Jesus' name. Singing faith. Singing faith. Surpassing faith. Surpassing faith. The faith that surpasses your problem. The faith that surpasses your mountain. We're looking at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, and Jesus is saying unto you, and Jesus is saying unto everyone, I will come. I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. And my servant, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, he has to go. And to another come, he cometh, he has to come. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it, it has to be done. When Jesus had it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Surpassing faith. I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. The faith of this man, just saying, say the word. And if you are saying that tonight, if you are saying that tonight, just say the word. Just mention the problem. And if it's me, I'm healed. I'm delivered. Say the word. Send forth the word. And I'm healed tonight. Surpassing faith. Look at verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be done unto thee. There are believers there tonight. I said there are believers there tonight. Thank God it's done. Thank God your prayer is answered. As thou hast believed, so be done unto thee. Saving faith, steadfast faith, 
silent face, strong face, sonship face, surpassing face, the Shunammite's face. The Shunammite's face. Look at Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon. And then, and then, and then, is that the end of the story? The end of your story has not come. The end of your life has not come. The end of your project has not come. Verse 21, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, And she said, And she said, That the Shina might speak. It is well. It is well. And then, in verse 26, run now. I pray thee to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with their husband? Is it well with the child? Is it well with you? As she said, it is well. It is well. It is well. Look at the sickness. It is well. Look at the mountain. It is well. Look at the challenge. It is well. Is it well with you? Is it well in your family? Is it well in your place of work? Is it well with the accommodation? Is it well with the debt? Is it well in your community? Is it well in your local church? How about today? How about today? I said how about today? I said how about today? The Shunammite's faith, it is well. You know the end of the story? She got to Elisha and Elisha got to them. And when Elisha prayed, that child got up. That child got up. You will get up. For healing, you will get up. Uh, amen. And you are sitting down. For prosperity, you will get up. For deliverance, you will get up. For dominion, you will get up. Is it well? I said, 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 is it well? Open your mouth, open your mouth and tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. And pray in faith. And pray in faith. There's salvation here today. There's healing here today. There's deliverance here today. There's liberation here today. There's freedom here today. It is well. It is well for liberation. Today, for liberation. Every day, there's freedom. There's freedom from sin, it is well. There's freedom from sickness, it is well. There's freedom from oppression, it is well. There's freedom from demons and spiritual attacks, it is well. There's freedom from curse, it is well. There's freedom from satanic affliction, 
It is well. There's freedom from bondage, from addiction. It is well. There's freedom from the power of the world. It is well. There's freedom from temptations of the flesh. It is well. There's freedom from the perpetual recurrent problems. It is well. There's liberation here tonight for you. There's healing tonight for you. There's deliverance tonight for you. There's victory tonight for you. There's miracle tonight for you. There's abundant supply, abundant supply tonight for you. There's eternal life, a ticket to heaven, a privilege to get to heaven, waiting for you tonight. There are signs and wonders here tonight. Signs and wonders here tonight. Signs and wonders here tonight. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Saving faith. Come with that saving faith. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, 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 turn away from your sin. Repent of your sin. Call upon the name of the Lord. I say, Lord, I drop everything. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I give it all. I look to Calvary. I look to Christ. Let him save you tonight, save you tonight, save you tonight. The saving faith. Steadfast faith. Steadfast faith. Oh Lord, here I am, steadfast faith. Oh Lord, here I am, steadfast faith. Satan will not stop you. Demons will not stop you. Your thoughts will not stop you. Unbelief will not stop you. And you cry out aloud unto the Lord. Steadfast faith, steadfast faith. Oh Lord, here am I, here am I. Open my blind eyes. I want to rise up and walk. This tumor must vanish away. This liver problem must be solved, must be healed. Steadfast faith. Silent faith. If I may but touch his garment, if I may but touch his garment, if I may but touch his garment, touch him tonight. Touch him tonight. Touch him tonight. Touch him tonight. I shall be made whole. Tonight is that night. Tonight is that night. Tonight is that night. I shall be made whole. Is touching you now? Silent faith is touching you now. Strong faith. Calling those things would be not as though they were. I've got it. Calling those things would be not as though they were. I've got it. Calling those things would be not as though they were. I've got it. Not looking at the deadness of Sarah's body. Not looking at the deadness of his own body. But calling those things which be not as though they were. I've got it. I have it. I receive it. It is mine. I cannot be denied. I will not be denied. I have it tonight. I possess it tonight. I'm holding on it tonight. Strong faith. Strong faith, sonship faith, the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I come alive by the faith of the Son of God. I am walking by the faith of the Son of God. I overcome by the faith of the Son of God. I am triumphant. I am triumphant. By the faith of the Son of God. You have dominion. You have triumph. You have your destiny changed in the right direction. Because now you live by the faith of the Son of God. Sonship faith. Surpassing faith. Surpassing faith. Speak the word. Only the word. Speak the word, only the word. Speak the word, the word only, the word only. And my servant shall be made whole. 
and my body shall be made whole, and my life shall be made whole. Speak the words only. The Shunammite's face, it is well. 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 You are carrying miracles home tonight. Shout, it is well. How about your life tonight? I said, how about your life tonight? I about those blind eyes tonight. I about those lame legs tonight. I about that tumor tonight. I about the cancer tonight. I about the causes tonight. I about the deformity tonight. I about the joblessness tonight. I about the tears and the sorrow tonight. It is well. It is well. It is well. Where are you? It is well. Where are you? It is well. Your prayers are answered tonight. The yokes are broken tonight. The sicknesses are healed tonight. The job is provided tonight. The barrenness is cancelled tonight. HIV is healed tonight. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name. We bless your name tonight. We glorify you tonight. You are exalted tonight. In our heart, you are exalted. In the church, you are exalted. On the mouth of everyone, you are exalted. And Lord, you have said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray for those who have called upon you. They want their sins forgiven. They want salvation for their soul. They want their names written in heaven. Save them in Jesus' name. Forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of blood. And Lord, I pray for those who are sick tonight. The sicknesses will not follow them back home. Sickness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Every mountain of sickness, every mountain of disease, every mountain of infirmity, I command you, mountain of sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Kidney problem, be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, be healed in Jesus' name. The ears, be opened in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues, speak out in Jesus' name. Barrenness, go out in Jesus' name. Things walking about in the body, I command those walking spirits, those tormenting spirits, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray healing for everyone, deliverance for everyone, dominion for everyone. We call those things will be not as though they were. It is done. It is done. It is done in every life in Jesus' name. Those who are jobless, I pray that the new job will come to you in Jesus' name. Those who are barren, I pray barrenness is cancelled in your life tonight. In your life tonight, barrenness cancelled in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle, your miracle baby. What are you? Receive your miracle baby. Lord, confirm it in Jesus' name. Demonic power, demonic attack, demonic affliction, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every sin your people have asked you tonight will say it is done. We're saving faith. We say it is done. We're steadfast faith. We say it is done. We're strong faith. We say it is done. But that silent, undeniable faith. We say it is done. And with the sonship faith, I confirm tonight 
it is done. And with that strong face, that will not doubt anything, soaring face, surpassing face, I confirm tonight, it is done. What the Shunammite speak, I pronounce in your life, it is well. Yeah. To the left, it is well. Yeah. To the front, it is well. Yeah. To the right, it is well. Yeah. At my back over there, it is well. Yeah. At the gallery over there, it is well. Yeah. To those who are hearing in your houses, anywhere you are, the Almighty God has taught you tonight, it is well. Confirm it in every life, Lord. I thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. How are you there? It is well. I said, how are you there? How are you going home? Do you have a testimony? Are you free? Are you liberated? Shout it is well.